we have been learning about the different organelles in a cell. The proteins in the cells, called as enzymes, ensure that the organelles function together as a unit and also as a standalone entity. Every second, millions of these new proteins are being built inside the cell. But where exactly does this non-stop production take place? It's in these tiny molecular workshops called as the ribosomes. Ribosomes are molecular workbenches of translation. It is the process of turning the genetic code that is found in the DNA into their respective proteins. This design allows them to hold an mRNA or a messenger RNA strand and a charged transport RNA or tRNA in the right position so the amino acids can be stitched together into a growing polypeptide chain. Here is the fascinating part. Ribosomes are in tie to making just one protein. A single ribosome can work with any mRNA and any type of tRNA, producing different proteins over and over again. And because cells contain thousands of these ribosomes, the protein production is fast and continuous. Each ribosome has two subunits, one large and one small. Under certain conditions, the weak hydrophobic forces holding the structure together can be disrupted. And then the ribosome falls apart into individual RNA and proteins. And when the conditions are right, the pieces self-assemble perfectly. The reason they are able to self-assemble is because the molecules that are present inside fit with each other so perfectly. Ribosomes are a group of proteins called as the ribonucleoprotein complexes. They are built from ribosomal RNA or rRNA and more than 50 different types of proteins. The rRNA is the core structure and they can even perform the catalytic work during peptide bond formation. And the proteins that are present will help to stabilize the structure. All of these components are held together by non-covalent interactions, meaning they are not permanent chemical bonds. The RNA has self-catalyzing property. And you know what that helps in? The ribosomes are able to translate the ribosomal proteins, and which helps them to make a new ribosomes. The ribosomes were first seen under the electron microscope as dense particles by George Pallid in 1953. You see these bead-like particles present? So these are also called as pallid particles sometimes. Unlike other organelles, ribosomes are not bound by membrane. Therefore, they are classified as cell structures, but not organelles. So they are non-membrane bound organelles. They are found in both prokaryotic as well as eukaryotic cells. In prokaryotes, ribosome, they float freely in the cytoplasm. But in eukaryotes, they are found in few places. They can either be free-floating in the cytoplasm. They could be attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, forming the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And they can even be found within organelles like mitochondria and chloroplast in plant cells. But wherever they are, ribosomes act as protein factories. The ribosomes come in two main forms. The prokaryotic ribosome is the 70S ribosome made up of a 50S larger subunit and a 30S smaller subunit. The eukaryotic ribosome is 80S and it is made up of a 60S large subunit and a 40S small subunit. The S here stands for Swedberg unit. It is a non-SI unit. It basically measures how fast a particle is going to sediment when we centrifuge them together. So imagine we take the large and the small subunit together and centrifuge them. This is how they would separate. The smaller subunit being lighter moves above and the larger subunit being heavier comes down. So basically it reflects the size as well as the density of the particles. And that is why you will notice that the value of the smaller and the larger subunit are not arithmetically additive, meaning the 50 and 30S are not going to give you 80S. 